Welcome to our lecture online and in this example we're going to calculate the total amount of energy stored in a sphere that contains Q amount of charge. So assuming that it's not a conductor, it's like an insulator and we put charge evenly distributed throughout the sphere, what would be the total energy stored in that sphere? And the principle we're going to use there is the following. Let's say that we have one charge which is going to create a potential around it and then we add another charge to it which is now going to interact with that one and then we add another charge to it which is going to interact with those two and so we keep adding charges to it which means that the potential energy simply builds on the interaction between the additional charges we try to bring close to that. So we're going to use the same principle here. We're going to place a small amount of charge in the sphere and then keep adding charges and of course we're going to do that very slowly. We're going to add little ringlets of charge all the way around so that we basically have to integrate across the entire sphere. So it's the principle we're trying to use there. All right, how do we go about doing that? Well, first it might help us to find the density of the charge in the sphere. Let's do that. We're going to need that. So the density of the charge is going to be equal to the total charge Q divided by the volume of the sphere, which is equal to Q divided by 4 thirds pi r cubed, which is equal to 3q divided by 4 pi r cubed, r of course being the radius of the sphere. So that's the density of the charge in there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to place a very small amount of charge at the very center of the, uh, of the sphere. Let's call it q. q is a very small, infinitesimally small amount of charge we place right there. The next thing we're going to do, and of course that does not require any energy, if we make that charge small enough and that volume small enough, it takes no energy, it plays that first charge right there at the center because there's no charges already present. But then we're going to add another ringlet of charge, so a small little, uh, what we call, um, so a small amount, like let's say a shell of charge around there. So think of a small little shell, it has radius r, little r in a thickness of dr. I don't know if you can see that from there, but there's a radius r and a thickness of the shell dr. So that the volume of that shell, let's call it a dv, the volume of the shell is equal to the surface area of the shell, which is uh, 4 pi r squared, 4 pi r squared, and then the thickness is dr. So surface area times thickness is the volume of that little shell and the amount of charge contained in there, the dq that's inside there, is equal to the density of the charge inside the sphere times the volume dv. So the density we get from over there, which is 3q divided by 4 pi r cubed, and we multiply that times the volume of the little shell, which is 4 pi r squared dr. Okay, so that's the charge that we add. So what is the energy required to add that, the amount of work required to add that small amount of dq to the q that's already present? So we can say that the small amount of work dw is equal to the potential created, um, the potential created, and now of course be careful, this v is volume, this is potential, so maybe I'll just write it out. So it would be the k Q divided by little r, that's already there, that's the potential created, that's already there, times the charge that we add, which is this charge right here, which would be, um, uh, let's see here, that would be 3Q over 4 pi r cubed, multiplied times 4 pi r squared dr. So that's the amount of work that re that's required to add a small little shell of additional charge to that. But notice we have the small q there, we have the big q there, we have to somehow express the small q in terms of the total charge on there. Now remember, the small q is a charge in that very small little volume at the very center. So, what we can say is that the charge that is there, q, is equal to the density times the volume. So we're going to use the same principle again. So the density we already have from up here, and the volume, of course, is that small little volume at the very center. So let's put that in there. So this is equal to 3q divided by 4 pi r cubed. That's the density times the volume, which would be 4 thirds pi little r cubed. 
And now let's see here, we have a pi in the numerator, pi in the denominator, we have 3 fourths and 4 thirds. And so that means that Q, little q, is equal to big Q times the ratio of the small radius cube divided by the radius of the sphere cube, like that. So we can come up here and replace this Q by that Q right there. So when we do that, we can say that the amount of work required to add an additional shell of charge to the inside charge that's already there is going to be equal to K divided by R times a little q, which is equal to big Q, times little r cubed, big R cubed, times 3q divided by 4 pi r cubed, times 4 pi r squared dr. All right, now we have the work that's necessary to add a small little shell of charge to the existing charge already. We could probably simplify that a little bit, Say we have a 4 pi here and a 4 pi there, that cancels out. And let's see, let's rewrite that a little bit. So dw is equal to, we have a k, we have a q squared. So we have k q squared. Uh, what else do we have? We have um, r to the third, r to the fifth, divided by r, that would be r to the fourth. We have a dr, and in the denominator we have an r to the sixth. Okay, so now we have the work that's required to add an additional shell of charge to the existing charge. Now we want to have that repeated over and over again until we fill the whole sphere full of charge. And so that means that the whole work done is equal to the sum of all the little dw's. We're going to integrate from 0 to r. Now you say, well, wait a minute. Why do you integrate from 0 to r? Didn't we already have some charge at that very center right there? And uh, doesn't that mean that it's not quite 0? Well, we started with a very small sphere that is virtually zero, so it's okay to start with zero, and that would be appropriate. And so this would be equal to, let's take all the constants out, so we get k q squared over r to the sixth times the integral of r to the fourth dr from zero to, oh, we're going to go all the way out to the outside of the sphere, aren't we? So we might as well make that big R for the limit of integration, because we're going to integrate all the way to the edge of the sphere. All right, that's an easy integral, so let's go ahead and do that. That's equal to kq squared over r to the sixth times r to the fifth over five, evaluated from zero to r, and then we plug in the upper limit, and we get an r to the fifth. Plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. So this is equal to, um, am I missing something here? Yes, I forgot something. I forgot my 3. I got a 3 in the numerator. Can't forget my 3. So I got to have a 3 in the numerator. And then when I plug in the limit, I get 3kq squared over 5r to the 6th times r to the 5th. And I notice that the r's will then simplify. And so this is equal to 3kq squared over 5r. And that is the total energy stored in a sphere that contains Q amount of charge if the radius of the sphere is equal to R. So 3 fifths KQ squared over R. That's kind of interesting. Remember that the potential energy of bringing two charges together, let's say we bring one charge together here, we have another charge together, let's say the distance between them is R, the potential energy for a situation like that would be KQ squared over R. Notice the similarity here, kq squared over r, except it's three-fifths that amount when all the charge is distributed evenly throughout the sphere like that of radius r. So the similarity of the, of the answer is there, but notice we have another constant, three-fifths, instead of the full charge there. So that's um, kind of interesting, but that's the answer to how to calculate the potential energy locked into a sphere that has a charge evenly distributed throughout it.